Welcome to What the Flick, everybody. It's uh, good to be back. Ben Mankiewicz, uh, Turner Classic Movies. Uh, Christy Lemire. Christy, How's it going? Nice to see you. Hi, good to see you. Film critic from the uh, Associated Press. Uh, Christy and I had a, uh, uh, a, a newsworthy uh, encounter this week, uh, thanks to the death of my cousin. Oh. <laughs> no, but uh, Christy uh, wrote the piece on uh, Tom Mankiewicz's uh, passing. He did a nice job, and uh, everybody in the family is uh, grateful. That wasn't oh. your job to make the family grateful, but uh, you did anyway. Well, you guys were super helpful to uh, talk to me and get all the information together, and it was all factual, which is helpful. Yeah, It's all right. true. It's we the benefit of all being true. So. Yeah, we decided so, not to make stuff up. Yeah, very, uh, very sad about him. Yeah, he, uh, he led an impressive life. Anyway, uh, I've been uh, traveling, so it's the first time I've done the show in a while. It's uh, great to be back. Um, and uh, uh, two uh, interesting uh, films, not uh, traditional uh, uh, summer uh, blockbusters, not a lot of uh, CGI, just some, some, some sort of uh, different, uh, moderately uh, clever ideas, um, including uh, what we'll start with, uh, a uh, purportedly true story. Inspired but the by. Right. The names have been changed uh, to, perfect, uh, to protect the porn lovers, so we don't entirely know what's true and what has been enhanced for Hollywood in the movie uh, Middlemen, um, but nonetheless an interesting story. Yeah, this is inspired by a true story about the guys who invented internet porn. It seems like a very quaint notion to look back at a time where we did not have internet porn. Well, they really. They what did we do? They invented the like how to charge people yeah. essentially for internet but porn. But it occurred to them, okay, like I'm tired of whacking off to like this magazine over and over again, or this same VHS tape over and over again. I need new and more and constantly varying stuff. Just before you give a complete description of the story, I you know I of course read your Associated Press review. I don't remember you saying in the AP review. <laughs> Uh, whacking off. I don't know what the AP style book says about that. Yeah, I'm it's, not... a, it's hyphenated. <laughs> yeah, I okay, all right, all right. Uh, sorry, um, go ahead. So they decide, okay, we're going to take these photos of naked girls and video and put it online, but we can like, make money off of it too. But they need help doing it because they're idiots. So here you go. My name's Jack Harris. Dig. The year was 1995. There was a VCR in every home. Music was still bought in record stores. And the world was buzzing about a brand new invention called the Internet. Watch it! Which up until then, sucked. What most people don't know is, it was impossible to buy anything online. Until these two idiots came along. What good is the internet for if it's not entertaining? We take some pictures, we scan them, we upload them, and we make a little money. What are you doing? Do not interrupt me for the next 15 minutes. And that's where I come in. We can take a credit card from anywhere in the world and deliver a product anywhere in the world. We can make a profit on every transaction. Uh, you st we started there with Luke Wilson. He's the sort of reputable trustworthy, conscience-driven businessman who came up with the idea of, wait a minute, yeah, you guys thought we can bill people, but here's the deal, we can make 10% on every single transaction. Uh, the two losers who came up with the idea, that was Giovanni Ribisi and, uh, and Gabriel Mock. And they're great in it. I mean, Giovanni Ribisi is totally over the top. I mean, he's coked up constantly, he's chain-smoking, he's paranoid, he's kind of squirrely. And it's a really cartoony, cartoony performance, but it's very, very fun. Like, I laugh my ass off every time I saw him. He's wild. It's fun. And uh, Luke Wilson's kind of, I mean, he's a straight man. Someone has to be the straight man among all the scumbags and the wannabes and, and the, the players here. Um, I think he's kind of the weak link. He, he's meant to be our conduit into this weird world, but he's kind of, he plays it too straight, so I'm not quite sure how he feels about this tugging at his conscience. He's almost too uh, pure. Like, there's not enough depth. Like, a guy doing this, okay, he might be, I mean, he's obviously, he's not going to be the Gabriel Mock, Giovanni Ribisi characters, or James Kahn plays this incredible sleazy lawyer, and he plays it he's well. Great. Uh, he plays it extremely well. And there's Russian mobsters, and, and they're interesting. But, and so we get that he's going to be sort of uh, uh, classier uh, than the other guys. Uh, to, <laughs> we'll get to the other guys. Uh, later, um, uh, but he, he's so he's classier than those guys, uh, and he's you know he's 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 more reputable than those guys. But I agree with you that he's still not quite complicated enough. I see some glimmers of what this does to him. He keeps telling himself it's all above board, you know, right. like 
people like Steve Wynn is not a pornographer, but he offers you know, pay-per-view porn in his hotel rooms, right. right? He keeps justifying his involvement in that regard. Like he's a businessman, right. like the way the Hiltons are businessmen. Right. Does he actually believe that? Right. I don't know. He has a wife and two kids back home in Houston. The more time he's in L.A., the more time he's away from them, and his interests get pulled away. There's a dalliance with a 23-year-old porn star. But and only one, and he's devastated by it. Like, he really sort of beats him up over but it. But that finally is a thing that you see, okay, we understand this person and there's complexity to him. Like, finally the, the affair with the porn star gets to him or I, whatever. I, I just think I would have bought it more if he delved into the dark side a little more. Yeah, there's not really come much of the dark out. side. Yeah, it's not. I mean, yeah, he has an affair, but he, I mean, he's exposed to this sort of hugely dark culture on right. a regular basis. It makes a lot of money off of it. And makes, you know, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of, of millions. You know, you see that scene that was uh, in, in many of the commercials that these guys have a $2 million check that they, you referred to it in your <laughs> in your review. There's a $2 million check left in a drawer that they forgot to catch. It's just sitting there. Yeah. Um, so uh, the characters, I think, were the strong point here. Uh, we mentioned them, but uh, Rabisi and Mocked and, uh, and, uh, and James Conn is great and in it. James Conn is great and the, and the, mo and the, and the mobsters were, were good the, as the well. The Russian mobster. But also it's a lot of fun. I mean, the way it comes at you, especially off the top with just this this onslaught of like images and ideas and the music, it's really fun. Like it moves very, very well. I think he definitely owes a debt to Boogie Nights in terms of the subject matter and also Goodfellas in terms of just the speed and just the style well, of it and the pop music use of it. Great use of Rolling Stones, you can't always get what you want. Yeah, I... Um, they uh, borrow, but it's fun. Yeah, the uh, well, George Gallo uh, uh, co-wrote and directed it. George Gallo's had a, a strange career. First of all, he apparently went to film school because of his love for Scorsese, so there it would go. be interesting that he... or you know, uh, uh, It would be logical that he borrowed from him uh, in that way, uh, George Gallo, like I said, mixed mixed career, uh, uh, written some some you know he wrote uh, the whole ten yards, which was a, a catastrophe. Right, um, but he also wrote Homeland Security. But then but, you go back twenty two uh, years, yeah. and he wrote this movie that is one of the best written films of my life that I enjoyed the most. Mm -hmm. I assume we're talking about the same movie. Midnight Run. Midnight Run. Great uh, yeah. mismatch buddy movie. Yeah. Which as we'll good get to a, the other guys later. <laughs> as good a buddy movie as you can do. Yeah. I mean if that uh, but I had a problem real quick to wrap this up. I had a problem with the tone of 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 middlemen. I didn't know whether it was funny and I didn't know right off the bat, I didn't know whether it was suspenseful and I thought it lacked some humor and lacked some suspense as it sort of searched for a middle ground. I didn't think Luke, Luke Wilson was complicated enough. And I, in general, am predisposed to disliking voiceover. And there was a lot it. of voiceover. There's a ton of it. And I thought maybe it would have been nice if we'd seen some of that voiceover rather than been told about right. it. Right. It makes things very, very obvious. It spells things out definitely. Like, these were bad guys we were going to see. Like, yeah. well, no shit. Thank yeah. you for that. That's right. very helpful. Yeah, we got that. Yeah, right. that's, there's too much of that. Luke Wilson's the weak link. And also, it's a very predictable kind of rise and fall story. I guess the, the details and the characters are what make that kind of thing fun. And that works somewhat, but yeah, we know where it's going. It's a so, better concept than it ended up being a movie. Yeah. What was your rating? I gave it a 6.5. So you still liked it? I liked it. No, yeah. it's fun. It's just, you know, it's, we've seen this before. Yeah. But there's just more porn this time. Right. I think a, a, a mm -hmm. great opportunity uh, uh, lost, but still, uh, I mean, I wouldn't tell anybody, definitely don't go see it. Mm -hmm. It's There's some interest in it. It's better than average. I gave it a five and a half. I didn't like it wow. uh, as well as okay. you, and that, uh, for those of you who really uh, can't do an ounce of division, me. that's going to, uh, <laughs> I think you can even figure that out. I write for a living. I don't okay. know. You shouldn't give me any credit What's for the average? It That'd be a six, Ben. There you go. Uh, <laughs> uh, so middleman scores a six. That's a tepid recommendation from uh, from me and Christy.